Deathloop is a game that many have struggled to describe. It wears parts of different hats, making it similar to many types of game, but also mixes these together in a way that is unique to itself. In fact, describing the game has been so difficult that even the development studio Arcane has struggled to do it and get people on board pre-release. So, my job's going to be quite interesting here, isn't it? Welcome everybody, my name is Doragon, and this is my review of the PS5 console exclusive, Deathloop. So what is Deathloop? Deathloop looked to be a roguelike when it was first announced. You had a target of escape the island, but you couldn't do this until you discovered all of the required facts and information about the world. This allowed you to get people and items into location that would allow you to execute what you needed to do and break the loop. The reality is, while Deathloop does borrow roguelike elements, it is probably about as far from a roguelike as you can get in a repeating gameplay loop. That still doesn't answer the question of what it is though. It's actually hard to explain without spoiling the story somewhat, as a big part of Deathloop is discovering all of this as the game progresses. This is why Arcane Studios struggled to get people on board with their explanations. So here's my attempt at explaining it, spoiler free. Deathloop is a game of discovery. From discovering who you are as a main character to who the visionaries are, great scientific and artistic minds from the world, and how all of you link together and what then needs to happen to break the loop. The loop is a 24 hour time window that regardless of whether you live or die by the end of it, will start again with everything reset to its position and state from the start of the day. You play as main character Colt, a man who has been reset over and over again and has a relationship with a woman on the other end of the phone. Colt keeps forgetting his past resets, but through your playthrough can carry knowledge from one loop into the next that will then allow him to break it and, hopefully, return everyone to a normal timeline. The visionaries, Juliana, the second assassin character from the trailers, and the general populace known as Eternalists here, all try to stop you along the way. And that's the basic premise of the game. I've given you more of a setup there than the game offers you when you first boot it up. As I say, to go into more depth would spoil it, and I don't want to do that to you, as discovery is a major part of this title. Let's then look at the narrative. The narrative is a weird one, simply due to the way it is presented, but I actually quite like it. There are many different ways to tell a story from straightforward linear time frame to flashback fill-ins and half and half approaches like telling one character's half then another's. Video games however allow for additional approaches and while they do exist in other mediums it has more prevalence and impact in video games. Deathloop tells its story through three main methods. In-game dialogue between characters, hidden collectibles in the world and animated 2D cutscenes. These all only happen or advance after you, the player, have achieved a certain goal in game, which can only normally be pulled off by obtaining those in-game collectibles to know where to go and what to do next. As you obtain new collectibles, you fill in backstory on Colt, Juliana, the Visionaries, Eternalists, the region itself, why you are there, why everyone else is there, and you will uncover some predictable yet satisfying revelations and narrative twists. There's nothing new or revolutionary in this story, but it is satisfying and kept me engaged right up to the point that I completed it 20 hours after starting. I can't really say much more on this point without spoiling it, but what I can say about it is, not every story needs to be mind-blowing. Growing up, I never thought that the Harry Potter novels were mind-blowing. I thought they were very simply written without much of a challenge for someone who was the same age as the protagonist but I always found them enjoyable. Now, while I struggle to return to the novels now due to the comments and ideologies of the author, I will never forget the enjoyment and representation that I got from them as a teenage boy. Deathloop wholeheartedly fits that sort of designation. Fun, enjoyable, 
even if it is a slightly predictable story, and rather representative due to having a black protagonist. Something that is still shockingly rare in games. Upshot then? I enjoyed it. I could use the game to unwind and build theories, and I didn't have to hyper-engage with it. Which, at this moment in time, I very much needed. Therefore, it's a good story all in all. So we now have an idea of what Deathloop is, and the story. So how's it all play? Honestly, I'm torn on this front. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is quite satisfying. As you learn more of the world and are able to carry tools from one loop into another, you become ever more powerful and flexible, moving around the maps in fancier and quicker ways while becoming more and more deadly in your pursuit of breaking the loop. This is fun, and just running into a map and seeing if you can clear it of all or no enemies is really quite a fun self-imposed challenge. But there are things that detract from that fun. Let me start with the invasion mechanic. On the home screen of the game, you have the option to break the loop or protect the loop. Breaking the loop is Colt's story and the main portion of the game. Protecting the loop, however, allows you to take control of Juliana and invade someone else's game, trying to kill their cult and sending them back to the start of the day. Now this doesn't engage immediately. You will be warned when it first activates. The description, however, states that your game will not be invaded regularly. It is just a different challenge that occurs now and then. For me, the game was unplayable the very moment that this was enabled, because as a new player, I had exactly zero tools to be able to fight back against Julianas that were invading with sniper rifles and explosive bullets that could kill me across the map. For a mechanic that literally had the word sparing in its description, I had no choice but to turn it off because every time that I loaded into that first mission after this was activated, Juliana would invade, and I would be helpless to respond, therefore completely halting my game progress. Once I had geared up a bit, I turned the option back on, and it was exactly the same. Constant invasions every time I loaded into a new map. Considering in-game, once Juliana has been killed you shouldn't encounter her again until the next loop, these constant invasions broke both narrative and gameplay flow. It would be fun if this mechanic triggered at most once a loop, but how I experienced it was just horrific and made me want to turn it back off immediately. The other way around is just as bad. Queuing to play as Juliana takes an utter age. I literally forgot that I was queuing last time I tried because it took so long that I'd gone and loaded the dishwasher instead before I heard a weird beeping from the other room, which was a successful connection. My expectation is that due to everyone experiencing the invasions like I did, there are so few people playing online that it's a fight between all of the Juliana players to actually find a game. Discovery is another weird one for me. The whole concept of the game is to discover what is going on and how to end it. And while you can stumble across the odd thing by going off the beaten track, most of your discovery is handed to you on a plate through fully guided quest lines. Every single point is given as a waypoint on the map. Now the maps aren't big. I know my way around all of them and can create some alternative interesting routes if I want to. But I only know that because I purposely went exploring. If I hadn't done that, I could easily have completed the game by just walking towards the map markers for every new bit of information without ever having to engage my brain. I found this quite disappointing. When the concept was to discover and uncover this stuff for yourself, to have it just given to you from the very beginning just nullifies an entire selling point of the title. You can turn the tracking off, and this improves the situation from a discovery perspective. But there is then no way to monitor what you're currently after in the hood, so you're constantly in and out of your menu to see what the next step may be. It just feels like they realised the discovery would be clunky if you were constantly in and out of menus, and rather than build an appropriate hood option to give information on the current questline, they just went down the easy development route with adding markers onto everything. Difficulty also let me down. Now, bear with me here. As I know there is a conversation that generally I agree with, 
that games should have an easy mode to allow those that just want the story, or maybe more physically challenged, to still enjoy the experience. But I'm not one of those people. I'm fully physically able, and I revel in a challenging game. I get very little to no enjoyment out of normal modes, as I often just breeze through them mindlessly. By the same token though, I am also fine with games that have a single difficulty, like Spyro and Crash back on the PS1, early Assassin's Creed games and the Soulsborne titles to name but a few. Deathloop, however, takes this to a mind-numbing extreme. There are no difficulty modes in this game. What you get is the only version available. And I can't stress how much that makes me sad. Let me give you an example as to why. In my final run, where I aimed to kill every visionary and break the loop, I stood atop a vehicle, directly above three NPC Eternalists, and casually killed them all without a single one seeing me. They were less than two meters from me. My gun was loud and the bullets exploded, yet nothing from the AI at all. I've snuck up in front of other NPCs and managed to somehow stealth kill them. You have the option to switch loadouts between each new map entry, but the only reason I ever did this was for a new self-imposed challenge, using stuff that I wasn't familiar with, as you can pretty much use anything and still succeed with mindless ease. The AI is so dumb and so easy to take out, either stealthily or Rambo style, that there is no challenge to any aspect of the game other than the odd bit of traversal. Look, I'm not saying we need super smart AI in every title, but something a little bit smarter than a wall would go a long way to improving the experience of this game. Failing that, give us normal difficulty settings that adjust things like how hard enemies hit, how tanky they are, and how smart they are. Because right now, unless this is your first ever game, Deathloop is such a breeze difficulty-wise that it just doesn't feel rewarding. It's not all bad though. While a very unique feeling, different from anything else I know, gunplay is fun in this game. Each weapon is unique in terms of design and function, but you'll also find some really unique and useful perks that higher weapon rarities roll with. I have a nail gun that I really like, as its shots mark targets around the impact area, but another of the same gun causes damage over time whereas yet another has a delayed explosion which can create some really fun trap moments. And this variation is true for every gun type except the yellow rarity ones, I had to really stop myself trying to say exotic there, which are static rolls but do something completely different, very much like Destiny exotic weapons. This creates a nice loot loop. First you have to find a gun that you want to keep. Then you have to earn enough residum to infuse it and keep it through all the different loops. You can then adjust aspects of your guns using trinkets, up to three per weapon. Trinkets are like perks or mods from other games. They can adjust your gun to be more optimal, things like quicker reloads and piercing ammunition. Alongside gun perks, you can also find personal ones. These can do things like increasing your max health through to granting a double jump and all sorts of useful utility in between. Now I mentioned Residum before. This is an in-game currency that is siphoned from infected objects in the world, defeated visionaries, or recycling duplicate trinkets. You need Residum to keep weapons, trinkets, and slabs across multiple different loops, but it only lasts for the loop that you're in, forcing you to choose between what you keep via a process called infusion, basically a button press in a menu, and what to try and re-earn later. This is a great overall system, and could place some real pressure on the player. Especially on the bigger endgame loops when they loot loads of slabs, trinkets and weapons. As with AI and difficulty though, this is far too easy to attain and use. By around the 10 hour gameplay mark, so halfway through my personal meandering playthrough, I had every weapon and every trinket I'd ever consider using and every slab with most of the upgrades. It was another system despite being brilliant in its design, that was let down by poor implementation, leaving it far too easy and mindless. Slabs are fun though. 
A slab is a power that the player can use to augment their gameplay. They have many different uses, from short distance teleports to enemy levitation and linking foes together so they share the same fate. They change your gameplay and are equipped and adjusted in much the same way as weapons and trinkets, though to obtain upgrades and additional perks for slabs, you have to defeat the visionary that uses it, loot the slab again, and then make it out of the map and infuse the upgrade. A similar loop to weaponry and trinkets, but with an additional step. The visionaries that hold these slabs though, are as stupid as the rest of the AI, so they aren't that hard to obtain an upgrade. The most interesting part for me is the side missions. Most of these aren't tracked or guided like the main campaign, and as such are hugely fun to figure out and execute. Two spring to mind, the smoking pact in Updam and the man in the boathouse in Freestad. These require thought, chance encounters, planning and multiple loops to complete. The only downside is that the rewards of these are more lore on Black Reef and the residents of the loop. It's quite a shame really that some of the most engaging content gives some of the worst rewards. We then come to the next gen stuff, and honestly, this is not a game to hold high as an example of what the PS5 can do. Things it does implement, and well, are the haptic feedback and 3D audio. The haptics are present throughout. You'll feel the surfaces that you walk upon and the different kick of the guns. You know where you're getting shot from by the controller feedback. I love this implementation, and the 3D audio complements it greatly. But the resistive triggers and load times leave a lot to be desired. I only noticed that the game actually has resistive triggers after I finished the story, because they are so minimal that they may as well not have been there. Load times? I'm very disappointed by how long it takes to load a map or new day. There are animated sting cards each time you move between a map and the prep menu and vice versa. We're not talking last gen wait times where you could make a brew while waiting for the game to load, but when you compare it to other PS5 titles like Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and Returnal, which don't have load times at all, these load screens in Deathloop are eons by comparison. Graphically, it's a similar mixed bag. Some characters look amazing, and ray tracing if turned on looks good. It isn't great like, say, Control, but it does make a difference. Personally, I played performance mode with that locked 60 frames per second and really enjoyed the smoothness. But the worlds did feel a bit two-dimensional. Vast areas feel like blocked colour, and NPCs all wear the same clothes and masks, which aren't textured and are a single block colour. This feels true for the visionaries too, especially Alexei who is never seen without a wolf mask. But then, carpets and handwritten notes look nearly real. Visually, it feels like they couldn't settle on a style and ended up going with a bit of everything. One point I can't really comment on is accessibility. I don't use it, so I can't really say what is good or bad but there are many comments and articles calling the game out for a distinct lack of accessibility features, so I'm going to link a couple of these in the description to allow you to inform yourself on this matter from a better source than I. It's weird. For every great design choice, there is a really poor one, and then another great one to rebalance the scales. My overall feeling is that the game is good, but it loses points for moments to just frustrate the player or make them question why. We then come on to what I'm calling the Dishonored situation. Now you should always check out multiple reviews of a game, because different people gain different positives and negatives from the same piece of entertainment. One thing that you should be aware of when doing that for this game though, is the Dishonored bias. Dishonored was a stunning game back in the 360 and PS3 era. It married together action, adventure and stealth with the supernatural. And the two follow-ups continued the trend, and while not as shockingly brilliant as the first due to actually having expectations by their release, they were still great games. 
But this quality has blinded many to the glaring issues that this current game actually has. Rose-tinted glasses allow them to see what they want to see rather than what is with Deathloop. But then, that may be your viewpoint and a worthy review for your consideration. It's something to keep in mind as you watch or read other reviews on the game. In conclusion then, I actually enjoyed Deathloop. It's far from a perfect game, with poor mission designs, slow load times, a literal stop to progression and many other niggles. It definitely isn't a game that I can readily recommend. It also can't be in contention for any Game of the Year awards. It runs flawlessly sure, with no bugs or crashes in my personal playtime, and is great fun, but it's a delicate balancing act, with as many positive points as negative, and only an individual can therefore say if it is for them. For me, had I known pre-purchase what I know now, I would not have bought the game. Not yet, anyhow. I'd have waited until it came down in price and picked it up from the bargain bin. But that being said, I don't regret playing the game like I do other titles that I've previously reviewed. I had fun with it, and that's an important part of video games. Fun. It's easy to pick up, and it's bombastic in its gameplay however you choose to approach things. But importantly, it just doesn't have that magic that something like Returnal did for me, and is nowhere near the magic that Insomniac games keep pumping out. If you are interested in the game, I would suggest buying it physically if you think the positives outweigh the negatives, just to protect your right to return if it turns out to not be for you. But this is a game that many people will find a lot of fun in, maybe just not at the full next generation cost. I would like to thank you all very much for tuning in. I wanted to review Deathloop because it didn't live up to the expectations of the studio or pre-release reviews. It's still a good and often great game, but not one that will go down in history for my money. So I wanted to put the view out there of a man who has paid full price for this title, like you would. With all that said, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. It helps the channel out massively. You can also hit the bell for notifications of when new content goes live, and tell me in the comments section below your thoughts on Deathloop if you've picked up the game. You can also follow me on the socials from the links in the description box below, but otherwise, your viewership is very much appreciated. And until next time guys, have yourselves a fantastic day, and take care.